Hey, welcome back to the Learn to Code podcast. It's been a while since my last episode, and I'm um, getting back at this. I've been very busy, and uh, you may know by the title of this podcast, of this episode, I'm going to be talking about uh, uh, about my adventures and my ex- my personal experience mentoring my wife on the fundamentals of programming. Um, as you may or may not know from my past episodes, um, I am currently uh, not not actually working. I am doing some fiber work here and there. I am currently developing a WordPress website, uh, but I am actually receiving a full paycheck from my uh, from my company. So. Uh, we lost our main our main client here on Puebla. Uh, that doesn't mean that I'm not um, still on the payroll. Yeah, uh, it's not a mistake. It's basically, uh, uh, well, the company actually told me that uh, I was going to receive um, uh, my my regular salary uh, without bonuses. Uh, for a period of time until December, when up until that time I'm going to be reassigned to something else. So I am using this time to uh, like a long vacation, um, and and I am using the time to learn uh, something new, especially on the software development environment. And I'm basically learning to program and learning to code. So. Uh, during my adventures, my wife is actually living with me right now, so we live together now. And um, she, uh, her story is basically she, um, she has studied uh, computer science a long time ago. Um, I am even old, I am older than her, so um, she graduated. I am a dropout. So she graduated, but her experience on uh, on actual on actual programming is very limited. Having said that, uh, she is very dedicated to a study, and uh, when we were together, I guess that uh, watching me study programming sparked her interest and curiosity about programming in general. And uh, who knows, uh, um, some questions uh, were made and I was answer- answering them and one thing um, followed the other. So I decided to purchase, uh, to buy uh, a laptop for her, a personal laptop for her. So uh, I'm not sharing that, um, that computer that's uh, for, her, for her personal use. And I am using uh, that computer. Well, not me. She's using the computer. Uh, uh, but the condition is basically... Well, not a condition. She can actually do whatever she wants with it. Uh, yet, since I saw her interest in learning how to code, so I decided to begin mentoring her. So, uh, in the past episodes, um, I've been explaining a little bit of what uh, had we been doing this couple months. Uh, this last two weeks have been very interesting. Uh, we've been working with JavaScript uh, because it's easy and it's uh, it's already installed on most uh, computers out there. It's not all. Uh, if you do have a web browser, then you are basically already you already have JavaScript installed, basically. Uh, so I began. Uh, mentoring her about the what what actual programming is in the real world in 2019. So uh, it, it is a very different experience right now than 10 years ago, and it shows because 10 years ago we were being taught by uh, government employees, by government teachers. They are they were. Uh, badly pay and unfit for teaching 
and even though they were supposed to teach us uh, programming uh, the truth is that it's not really um, the best uh, to uh, they were pretty bad at it they didn't know anything anyway so most of the time the teacher were asking us the students uh, things that not even then knew how to actually do so having said that i did learn quite a bit there and um, at least it got i got my curiosity um waking up back in the day uh, but never mind i'm digressing i guess so mentoring my wife into fundamentals of, of programming so my strategy here uh, is basically choose uh, an easy to pick up uh, programming language um, uh, an easy to install programming language and that's basically what i choose javascript uh, javascript is a c style language and it's quite easy to get into and it's not very a threat on many other and on many things um, which i see as a an advantage because i want to focus on the basic of programming rather than uh, spend hours trying to figure out uh, how to solve uh, a feature or how to um, figure out how to run uh, a hello world program so javascript it is so in order to teach her javascript or at least the fundamental of programming um, i did create a couple of files which you can see here if you are watching this on youtube uh, the first one is called index.html which is basically um is basically a, an, a simple html file which only function is to call my JavaScript functions. Uh, I already talked about it in the previous episode, so I'm not going to be talking about it uh, today. Um, I did make um, a little modification to the previous one, I believe. Um, uh, I added a single line uh, right next to the uh, script line. Um, I am importing another file called function.js which basically contains my uh, whatever function i decide to create and the main script is is being added at the end it's called a script.js so those are basically the main lines on the on the html document and basically my functions.js which contains a single function right now which is a, a my function and uh, and the only thing that it does is basically just uh, create an alert with the my function string on it so it's basically a a function version of the hello world program and right after that i do have a the script.js let me see here script.js where it's basically my uh, the the file that I use to teach my wife uh, JavaScript, or may I I'm not really teaching her JavaScript. I am teaching her teaching the fundamentals of programming. So uh, I don't have my notebook right now, but never mind. Um, I do if I do recall uh, the last thing that I did was uh, today's class was basically. Uh, we were talking about uh, object-oriented programming. We were talking about uh, how objects and classes exist in object-oriented programming, or what do they mean? What's the difference between classes and objects? Um, uh, we were talking about how JavaScript is um, is a very casual um, object-oriented programming language. In the sense that we do have objects in JavaScript, uh, but JavaScript is very relaxed about rules about uh, object orientation, and it doesn't really apply all the mechanisms of object-oriented programming anyway. Um, right now, you can see that I'm uh, on my script.js uh, file from the last time I was talking here. 
um, I do have uh, some examples here. An if, uh, an if else statement, a switch statement. Um, this was the last uh, last time on the last episode. Let's delete all that. So I am actually very amazed of the capacity to learn uh, that my wife is actually showing. She's very interested. She's uh, putting the effort and I'm getting a good vibe about her, about actually learning how to become a proficient uh, software developer, may I say. So what things did, I, uh, did we work on? Um, I teach her um, about object-oriented programming. And basically how it is implemented in JavaScript. Um, we do have objects on JavaScript. Um, one uh, a really good example is the um, the regular expression object, which uh, we can create a regular expression in the uh, in this way. For example, let's declare a variable with the keyword bar and is followed by a space and uh, let's create a regular expression variable which is going to be equals to and let's create the shortcut handler for uh, a regular expression here which is basically a forward slash and hello the hello keyword and then we uh, we close with another forward slash a semicolon at the end and right there we just created a regular expression here if you don't know what a regular expression is it's basically um, a collection of characters and symbols which basically represent um, rules to validate a, a string for example i created a regular expression which is equals to the word hello so what that means is that if I declare another variable, um, which is going to be called greeting, and that variable is going to be equals to the uh, string between double quotes, hello, semicolon at the end. Uh, even though this couple uh, of variables seems to be very similar, because they contain the keyword hello, the truth is that the first one is a regular expression, which is only, um, which purpose is basically to evaluate uh, strings against it. Uh, let's make a very quick example here. I do have my regular expression variable and my greeting variable. And now I'm going to, um, let's add a if statement down here. Let's evaluate my greeting string against the regular expression. If my regular expression dot uh, test test is a method from the regular uh, from the regular expression object, um, and I'm going to test against what against my greeting. So what this is, what line number five means is that if my regular, uh, if I put to the test the greeting string against my regular expression, um, if it's test positive, that means that the greeting um, evaluates, evaluates to true against my regular expression. Uh, and I achieve that by ensuring that the rules uh, dictated inside the regular expression uh, match again my string. For example, my regular expression uh, basically reads hello between forward dash. Uh, this means that if my string contains the word hello, then I can get, uh, when I test in that string, which contains the word hello, that means that I am testing positive on the test. I am testing um, and I'm getting a true value out of the test. 
So let's give an alert here. And the alert is going to say only um, regular expression tested positive. Semicolon at the end and an else. And the else is going to um, is going to print an alert, which will print the test failed. Semicolon at the end. It's a very simple uh, script. Let's save this and execute. And if you're watching this on on YouTube. You can read on the top an alert box which reads regular expression tested positive. This happens because uh, my string, which only contains the, the word hello, has uh, passed the test against the regular expression. So if I write something else inside the greeting, let's say a, a space hello, then the word hello is at the end of the string and we can even add a colon and and ask what's up so basically the greeting string reads hey hello what's up so if I test this again it's going to test positive again because it contains the word hello regular expression test positive but if I modify the word and I add a third L to the hello then I have hello with three L's um, then the test is going to fail because I don't have the hello word uh, anymore the test failed so um, regular expressions are, be are used a lot where uh, when you want to validate uh, emails, what happens if you want to validate zip codes, or what happens if you want to validate um, uh, social, secu social security numbers, or, or even credit card numbers. So before you actually use um, an input value from the user against your database, you may like to test against a regular expression just to validate that the value is actually correct. So um, I was teaching this and a lot of uh, and more things about regular expressions to my wife. And I was actually um, amazed that she was uh, uh, following along on this. We even find out um, uh, how could we actually, um, uh, for example, if you're watching this on YouTube, I'm going to look for a regular expression to validate emails. Let's copy and paste a regular expression to validate emails. For example, this one. Oh my God, this one is, okay. So, I do have a very long regular expression right here. So all these uh, gibberish symbols that I just pasted, um, they may seem to be very confusing and just gibberish, but in the language of regular expressions, all of these may actually mean something. So let's try to do our validation again. And I'm going to store the string hello at google.com uh, just to make a quick test here and um, evaluate against this. And let's see. And it seems that the regular expression test is positive. Let's see if we can add um, another at symbol. And now the test fails. So an email cannot contain two at symbols. 
I wonder if I can if it may contain uh another another character a weird weird character here let's see if if that evaluates to true uh look looks like this is a a valid um a valid email anyway well regular expressions are very useful what else we were uh, i was teaching about classes obviously so uh, it came to me a couple of interesting classes inside JavaScript. The first one is dates. Let's declare a variable called today, which is equals to new space date with uppercase D and open and close in parentheses and semicolon. So on this line, I just created a new variable which contains an object. And this object contains mechanisms to store dates. So uh, at this point today, let's get an alert and see what happens when I try to print out the contents of today. Okay, I got the regular expression positive and I got a very long string which reads sat space June space 29 space 2019 space 23 um, and you get the idea basically I'm getting the the date the time and, G, and it ends with GMT minus 0500 so I'm getting the current date by creating this variable here um, and this is now an object and when we are talking about um, object oriented programming and now we are getting our, our hands into very complex stuff uh, many veteran programmers uh, may say well that's very uh, a very simple a very simple example it's not really that hard but the tr yet the truth is that my wife does have some uh, uh, some experience and she actually confused or believed that objects on JavaScript were basically uh, structures like in C. Structures in C are basically a collections of several variables. Um, they are not properties. They are not. Um, they don't have methods. Uh, they are just data structures. So today does have some skills here. If I um, write a dot after the today variable, I'm getting a list on Visual Studio Code, which is showing me uh, all the methods and properties of this object. I can see that I do have a get date method and get the day of the month using local time. I do have a get day method which gets the day of the week using local time. Get full year, get hour, year milliseconds. I do get a lot of get methods alongside the set methods too. I do have set hours, which basically change the value of the hours, uh, full year, day, date, anyway. So I can do a lot of things with, um, with objects. Objects do have a lot of code already written. We don't really need to learn uh, learn how the actual um, get date method works. We just we just need to understand how to use it and how if the method requires parameters, how to send parameters into the method. So. It's very simple stuff, yet it's really important. So uh, another object that we were using was, um, I was teaching her about object-oriented programming. Um, so I needed to talk about instantiation, I just did here. And I just start, we were, uh, we, we start talking about the math uh, class. So I use the samples with the math class because math class does have 
some interesting static methods. So what does that mean? Well, basically, uh, in order for me to use the methods of the today variable, I actually needed to create an instance of the date class. So what that means is that in, I, cr I needed to declare a variable named today, and that is equals to new space and the name of the, of the class. In this case, it's date. Open parenthesis, close in parenthesis. That line um, instantiates a new object on the program. So with the math class, I don't really need to do that to use it. I can use it directly by typing the name of the class. In this case, it's math. And then typing a dot. And here I do have access to a series of methods and properties. For example, if I want the value pi, I do have a property which is called pi, and this is the ratio of the circumference of a circle to its diameter, something like that. I get access to a lot of methods. For example, max, which is uh, requiring a list of values. One, two, three. So I may add a, a, a really long list of values. And what this method does is receiving this list of values and it's going to tell me which value is the, is the biggest. So I can actually, uh, let's see, let's create a variable x. Oh. bar x is going to be equals to mat dot max and a series of numbers and i'm going to create an alert x at the end of the script and let's run it now let's run regular expression and i'm getting that the the biggest number is four five Three, four, five. We obviously do have a mean method to get the, the lowest value on a series of numbers. So, which is one in this case. So, I was playing with that concept of the oriented programming and dates, math, and several methods. We actually spent it like, uh, like two hours just with these two, with math and dates. We were trying to get uh, a method to give us the text version of the month. Uh, we, weren't be, uh, we weren't able to, uh, yet we find out how to write our own version with a function. So we were working a lot and I'm pretty confident that I am actually teaching something useful to somebody else. So programming in general is not really that hard. Uh, once you understand that you need to learn uh, brick by brick, bit by bit, if you try to take all of this at once, it's going to be really confusing. And if you, get a, if you get a good teacher and you get into it for real, I guess that anybody can actually learn how to develop software by his own. And it's not, it's not really that hard. It does require effort and it does require time. And I am afraid that those two are in, in low supply these days. But never mind that. So... I've been uh, working with my wife lately. Uh, I've been out of the podcast scene for a little day, for some days. Uh, yet, I guess that I can try to, if not making the full video version, I may like to talk into my phone more often. And I guess I may uh, try to record video for YouTube there, uh, for YouTube too using my phone maybe I, I i may like to try that tomorrow 
uh, maybe using a, a tripod or a selfie stick, something like that. So I can actually record myself recording this. Uh, but who knows? Uh, I guess time will tell. So I am actually mentoring someone. Uh, this is the first person I've been mentoring. Uh, it's been a very rewarding experience for myself. Uh, having said that, I don't think that I will do this mentoring work with uh, another woman uh, in an actual work environment because I believe that this really uh, it requires a lot of commitment and a lot of, uh, of work. And I frankly don't think it's actually worth it at this time. Uh, I, I'm not talking about uh, someone in a specific, but, but I do have to say that I will not do this with a female co-worker. And at least not um, we both alone on the same room. Not because I uh, I'm not a pervert or any I don't have a problem. Yet on the Me Too era that we are living right now, uh, it doesn't take anything uh, from my part uh, to be involved in trouble. I think that men that try to interact with the op with the opposite. With the other sex, uh, they are going to be finding problems in the Me Too era because uh, you may get accused of something false, or maybe you deserve it. Who knows? And that's the thing. Um, you don't even need to to you don't get to prove your innocence. You are basically you only need uh, to piss off a female coworker once to say goodbye to two years of career. So uh, I guess that in today's environment, that's way too much risk uh, and too much work to benefit someone else. So I, I, I don't see the point at this time, at least. Maybe uh, uh, men with men and women with women, that will be a, a more sensible solution at the time. Uh, but I have to say that uh, I will not mentor someone uh, if if that's uh, if I cannot trust that that someone is not going to try to 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 hurt me in the future. I don't know. Maybe it's a maybe I'm just afraid of things that never happen in the first place. Anyway, at least not to me. Uh, but at the end of the day, why bother? So I'm going to be spending a lot of my time and a lot of my effort and a lot of my uh, my money even into somebody else for the benefit of the company. So I'm risking for the benefit of the company itself, not for myself actually, uh, because I'm not really getting anything out of it. I just want people to get to improve, but the temptation to um, uh, to use something against somebody else just to get ahead or just to excuse yourself is way too big at this time. So, uh, me, in my personal opinion, in my mo in my personal opinion, I don't think it's actually worth it. So. Um, I'm only going to help people that actually ask me for very specific questions. I'm not going to be teaching entire courses in person because I am not a teacher and I, I'm not a professional teacher and I, I'm not a school. Uh, but I guess I could answer with questions from time to time. Um, having said that, I... I am fully committed to my wife and to her improvement. And I'm pretty sure that she's going to achieve great things if she's uh, keeping at it. Uh, only time will tell. Who knows? Thank you for coming in and I hope to see you later.